In Creole Parametric, you can customize the format of the whole notes that are generated for your standard holes. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I have a model open. I had a copy of ASME Y1441 and I wanted to duplicate one of the models in there. I also wanted to duplicate their whole note formats and theirs are different than the Creole Parametric default whole note. For example, here we have a hole that has a counterbore and so they've got the first line with the number of instances, then they have the size of the screw for it, and then the class, and then we have the counterbore diameter and the counterbore depth. So I wanted to create a custom note for that. Let me show you some slides to explain the different parameters that you're going to use in there. So let's go through some of these different hole parameters. If you have a pattern of holes, you can use the pattern underscore NO for number for the number of instances in that pattern. Also, you can use either fastener ID or screw size to report the size of the screw that would go into that standard hole. And then of course you have diameter, you have drill depth. You can also specify the thread series, the thread class, and thread or pitch, which depending on if you're using SI or English units, that'll either be threads per inch or the pitch value. And some other ones that you have. There's another one for threads per inch. There's a thread depth. You've got number size. And then you have various different parameters pertaining to a counterbore and or a countersink, as well as an exit countersink. There are also special symbols that you can incorporate into your whole notes, like for depth, the countersink symbol, the counterbore symbol, using the diameter symbol, and also a degree symbol. And when you are incorporating these, you can see over on the right, we have the key codes that you would type into your whole note format. And you can see that they say control A, then a letter, then control B. Be aware that you're not going to press the control key on the keyboard and then hit the letter A. You're actually going to type this out exactly as I have it here. You're going to have the left bracket, you're going to type in CTRL, dash A, and then the right bracket, then the appropriate letter, and then do the same thing for CTRL. Let's jump into Notepad to see how this is going to look. Here I am in Notepad, and right now we're taking a look at one of the default hole charts that comes with Creo Parametric, and this is for the ISO class of holes. And so here you can see we have our table data up at the top. And the last line here is for callout format. And you'll notice that this line is blank. When the line is blank, it is using the system default hole format. And this is where you would actually type in the information if you wanted to have a custom hole note. Let's take a look at a hole chart that I made. And so I made one for ISO dash for H, and I've got the class over here. Here are some of the different fasteners that we have for this. And then this line is where I have my custom whole format. And so you'll see that first off, it starts off with a brace, and then the number zero, and then a colon, ampersand, and then the name of a parameter, pattern NO. The reason that we have this is because I want to have the letter X right after the pattern number. So this brace format, the squiggly brace, this is the old pro engineer whole note format. You used to put your different fields inside of the squiggly braces and then there was a number. The numbers didn't have to be sequential, they just had to be unique, but then that allowed you to specify, hey, go out and retrieve the value of this particular parameter. The reason, again, that we have the squiggly brace format for the pattern number is just so that I could have the letter X directly after the pattern number parameter. If I didn't have the squigglies, it would literally print out ampersand pattern underscore NOX instead of retrieving the pattern number. All right, then we have an ampersand and then a, another parameter. It's grabbing the screw size, which is the same as the fastener ID, 
Then I have a dash and then the ampersand for thread class and then some spaces. Then there's a forward slash. The forward slash means that the following is going to take place on the next line. And then I've got the left bracket and the control A followed by the letter V. The letter V gets you the counterbore symbol and then control B and then ampersand C bore diameter that gets the counterbore diameter. Forward slash means go to another line for the following and then we have control A and the X that gets you the depth symbol and then we're retrieving the counterbore depth parameter. So again, there are a lot more parameters that you can use other than this. Now, one thing I'll show in another video, what if our hole does not have a counterbore? These different parameters here don't make sense. Well, starting in Creo 6, there's something called tokens that you can use to control whether or not different parameter values are being displayed if they don't actually exist. And also you can create another table underneath the thread data for the default callout format depending on different situations. For example, you might want to have a different format note if you have a countersink. You might want to have a different format note if you have a counterbore. You might want to have different formats of notes whether the hole is tapped or drilled. So you can use a table that specifies all the different possible conditions for the state of the hole and then have a custom note format for each one of those states. So that's how you can set up your callout format. Let's jump into Creo Parametric to take a look at an example of using this custom hole chart. All right, here I am in Creo. I've got a part open and it's got one of its cross sections activated. I'm going to locate a new hole in the model. I will click on the hole command and then I will change the type from simple to standard. Now we have our different hole types available from the drop down list. And this is the one that I just created that ISO 4H with a custom callout format. So I will select that. Let's change the size. I want to use the M5 hole and I want it to have a counter bore. Let me select one of the points in the model for locating it. There you can see the cross section of the hole and some of the different dimensions. Here we have the shape tab. If I go to the properties tab, we can see the data that comes over from the hole chart that populates the values in here. Let's hit the check mark. And now I've got a note displayed in the model. I'm going to use the selection filter in the lower right hand corner to use annotation so I can grab this and then move it. And that way we have the note with a particular format. And here in this particular case, yeah, it's got one X for one instance of the whole, then M5 by 0.8-4H for the class. And then we have the counter bore diameter and also the depth of it as well. Let me go back to the whole and then edit definition. Here we have on the shape tab, if you want to change these different values. So for example, maybe I want the counter bore only to be a value of two and we want our counter bore to be a value of 10. We can plug in those different values. The preview is updating on the computer screen and maybe instead of having a blind depth for the hole, hey, we could change it to be a through hole and it goes through the entire part. Let me hit the check mark and let me grab the annotation and move it where you can see it. Now I'm going to take the hole and pattern it. And for the pattern type, let's change to a point pattern and I will select, I believe it's in sketch two. That way we can get three instances of the hole and the pattern number updates appropriately. So again, this particular hole format Again, I was trying to duplicate an image coming from ASME Y1441 on digital product definition, but that's how you can create your own custom whole note formats.
Also, one thing to be aware that this is actually a note inside of the whole feature. You can actually turn this into an annotation element. Let me go to the annotate tab and I'm going to create a new combination state. Let's go to the state down at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to going to right click and rename it. And this one I'm going to call 6A and hit the enter key. If I take this annotation and then use the add to state or assign to state icon, it converts it into a 3D annotation element. Oops, oh, looks like I have the wrong orientation. Let me select it and I can right mouse click and hold and choose change orientation. For some reason it used that datum plane. Let me choose a named model orientation and the front orientation should work for me. Let's click the OK button and then grab this and move it so that now it is appearing more where I want it to. And yes, I would probably change the reference so that it would be attached to the edge of the hole. And if I wanted to, I could redefine this combination state and say, hey, I want this one to use cross section A in the model so that way I have it visible once more. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.